Gandhi, Dr. King, uh, dramatized and defined the technique of nonviolence, and yet he also said that the only alternative to fear is violence, and that if that were the alternative, he would have to choose violence. Do you subscribe to that judgment of Gandhi, or would you disavow violence under any condition? Well, I think I would have to somewhat interpret Gandhi at this point. I don't think he was setting forth violence as, a, as an alternative. I think he was emphasizing, uh, or, or rather trying to refute an all too prevalent fallacy. And that is that the persons who use uh, the method of nonviolence are actually the weak persons, persons who don't have the weapons of violence, persons who are afraid. And I think that is what Gandhi was attempting to refute. Now, in that instance, I would agree with Gandhi that if the only alternative to violence, uh, to fear, uh, is violence and vice versa, then I would say fight. But it isn't the only alternative. And that is the one point that Gandhi was trying to bring out. It seems to me that there are three ways that oppressed people can deal with their oppression. What are they, Dr. King? Well, one is to rise up in uh, open violence, in physical violence. And some persons have used that method, persons who have been oppressed. But I think the danger of that method is its futility. I feel that violence creates many more social problems than it solves. May I interrupt you there, Dr. King? There are today certainly people who are forced to endure a kind of injustice that neither you nor even Gandhi in his time had ever seen. Uh, for example, would you regard the martyrs of Hungary's rebellion a year ago as misguided men and having used violence? I admire freedom fighters wherever they are, but I still believe that nonviolence is the strongest approach. I think that would apply to the Hungarian situation also. I don't think it's limited to a particular locality. I think it... Uh, should apply in every situation in the world where individuals seek to break a loose from the bondage of colonialism or from some totalitarian regime or from the system which we confront in America. You truly believe then that nonviolence is the sole, the universal answer to injustice and oppression? Very and definitely. Lasting Very definitely. I feel that um, nonviolence, organized, I should say, organized uh, nonviolent resistance is the most powerful weapon, weapon that oppressed people can use in breaking a loose from the bondage of oppression. Now, the other method that one might use is that of resignation or acquiescence. But I think that is just as bad as violence because non-cooperation with evil is as much a moral obligation as is cooperation with good. You make a difference, a distinction between passive resistance and nonviolent resistance, is that it? Well, I, I think that can be something of a semantical problem. Uh, if passive resistance means uh, just passively accepting violence or injustice, if it means uh, cowardice and stagnant passivity, then there is a difference because nonviolent resistance th does resist. It is dynamically active. It is passive uh, physically, but it is strongly active spiritually. I believe firmly in nonviolence, as I have already said, but at the same time, I am not an anarchist. Now, some pacifists are anarchists following Tolstoy, but I don't go that far. I, I believe in the intelligent use of police force. I think uh, one who believes in nonviolence must recognize the dimensions of evil within human nature. And there is a danger that one can indulge in a sort of superficial optimism, thinking man is all good. Man does not only have the greater pass capacity for goodness, but there is also the potential for evil. And I think of that throughout my whole philosophy, and I'm, I try to be realistic at that point. So that I believe in the intelligent use of police force. And I think that is all we have in Little Rock. It's not an army fighting against a nation or a race of people. It is just police force seeking to enforce the law of the land. I came to Gandhi 
In the same setting, in theological seminar days, I had heard of Gandhi, but I remembered hearing a message by the president of Howard University, Dr. Mordecai Johnson, who had just returned from India. He spoke in Philadelphia on his trip to India and the whole philosophy of Gandhi and uh, passive and nonviolent resistance. And I was so deeply moved by the message that I went away and bought several books on the Gandhian, uh, on Gandhi and Gandhian technique. And at that point, I became deeply influenced by Gandhi never realizing that uh, I would live in a situation where it would be useful and meaningful.